AEW is impossible. After a major weekend from WWE where a lot of people were saying that AEW needed to do something to respond, they needed to do something big, AEW did what they do best. They focused on themselves, they put on the best show possible, and they delivered two match of the year contenders in the space of two days. And this isn't out of nowhere. The past few weeks of AEW TV have been excellent. They've handled the loss of Cody Rhodes very, very well, and some would argue that the show is actually flowing better without all the Codyverse stuff. And while if you look at the roster Tony Khan has built up over these past couple of years, then it would take something crazy to not be able to put on a good wrestling show with all this talent. The crazy thing is Tony Khan started his ruthlessness over WrestleMania weekend with Supercard of Honor. I already talked about that show and I said that FTR versus the Briscoes was one of the best tag team matches I've ever seen. Then came an excellent episode of AEW Dynamite which was capped off by the main event of FTR versus the Young Bucks 2. This match that was a winner take all between these two teams for the Ring of Honor tag team titles and the AAA tag team titles was nothing short of a masterpiece. When AEW was barely getting off the ground, I remember the Young Bucks made an appearance at the Double or Nothing press conference and they asked a question. They asked if tag team wrestling can be the main event. And while anyone who was aware of who the Young Bucks were prior to AEW knew that the answer was yes. The question was being asked to a much broader audience though. What the Young Bucks were really asking was, can tag team wrestling main event a major mainstream American wrestling promotion? Because prior to AEW, the only game in town presented tag team wrestling as a joke. So the minute the Young Bucks were announced as executive vice presidents of AEW, you just knew they were going to go out and build the best possible tag team division they could. And here we are in 2022 and I can confidently say that it's not even up for debate that AEW has the best tag team division in the entire world. And because the Young Bucks and Tony Khan and everyone else involved in the scouting process have built up such a good tag team division, the Young Bucks question has been answered. Tag team wrestling can in fact main event and because tag team wrestling is treated so seriously in AEW you can keep two teams apart for 18 months and when they meet again it'll feel like the biggest thing in the entire company. A lot changed between these two teams since the last time they met. FTR now came into this match with all the momentum in the world and instead of having their legs cut off or having the rug pulled out from beneath them AEW gave FTR the big moment that they needed. Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler avenged their loss from 18 months ago and defeated the young Bucks to become the AAA Tag Team Champions along with retaining the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. It's crazy to think about but this would have been match of the week on any other week of the year. But AEW is on a generational run right now. Tony Khan had said earlier in the week that he was going back to his ruthless roots when it came to Rampage. That he was going to start stacking up the show like he did when the show first started. And while we saw that on Dynamite this week when it was announced that next Friday Adam Cole and Adam Page would fight for the AEW World Title in a Texas Deathmatch. That's already a promising start to Tony Khan saying he wants to stack up Rampage once again. But then this week, we got a fantastic match between Jon Moxley and Wheeler Yuta. This is when the saying, AEW is impossible, which I'm now trying to coin, really kicks in. This match was all about creating a new young star. You had Jon Moxley, a former AEW world champion, a member of the vicious Blackpool Combat Club. And then you have Wheeler Yuta, who's on the best run of his young career so far. Fresh off a fantastic match against Brian Danielson, where he lost despite putting in a hell of an effort and also winning the Ring of Honor pure title at Supercard of Honor. This was the story of Wheeler Yuta trying to earn the respect of Blackpool Combat Club. But how the hell do you earn the respect of former AEW World Champion John Moxley? A man who told Brian Danielson, one of the greatest wrestlers to ever live, that the only way he would fight with him is if they bled together first. If it took John Moxley all of that to simply fight alongside Brian Danielson, then what was it going to take for him to respect Wheeler Yuta. Well, Wheeler Yuta just had one of the best star making performances I've ever seen for a young star in American professional wrestling when he faced John Moxley this week on Rampage. John Moxley beat Wheeler Yuta to a bloody pulp. He threw everything at him and Yuta refused to give up every single time. John Moxley hit Wheeler Yuta with a regular paradigm shift. He kicked out. He hit him with the elevated paradigm shift, which has defeated some of the biggest names in AEW, and Wheeler Yuta kicked 
kicked out as well, leaving John Moxley with no other choice but to choke out Wheeler Yuta to get the win. And it was Moxley's face after the match was over that told the story perfectly of the entire match. He couldn't believe what he had to do to put Wheeler Yuta down. And after this star making performance, Wheeler Yuta was finally welcomed with open arms by Brian Danielson, William Regal, and John Moxley into the Blackpool Combat Club. The Blackpool Combat Club knew that Wheeler Yuta had the ability to be a part of their group, but he had to earn it, and he earned it the only way that these guys would have accepted it with a little bit of violence. The crowd erupted for Wheeler Yuta throughout this match and he has now become a made man. It's arguable that he's leapfrogged some of the other four pillars after this performance. But here's the thing, that doesn't really matter because AEW is doing an excellent job building young talent to the point where I'm left asking myself every single time, how is a three-year-old promotion elevating young wrestlers better than the industry leader? How is AEW putting on match of the year contenders almost every single week? How has AEW AEW legitimized American tag team wrestling after it being presented as a joke for so many years now. How is Tony Khan who had no prior experience in the wrestling industry 3 years ago doing what he's doing right now with AEW. How is AEW even possible? AEW is focusing on the small things, on the storytelling, on the characters, on things mattering from a week to week basis. Tony Khan said it recently on an interview with Rastlin. He's approaching AEW with an art house film mentality. He's focusing on the smaller things compared to maybe WWE who presents their product like a big budget blockbuster popcorn flick. And there will always be the argument the one that makes the most money is better. And to that I'll make this comparison. You're really gonna tell me that Avatar, the highest grossing film of all time, is a better movie than Goodfellas? My friends, one is a popcorn flick and the other is cinema. And you can make the comparison between the two with WWE and AEW.